So, you have no idea what this word means because you've never heard of this word before. This word was created by me. Um, I'm just going to take 10 minutes to go over some rules of entrepreneurship that I have learned in my life that I'd like to share with you. And I try to make it relevant to you guys, right, who are just starting, who are still students. What does this word mean? Come on, there are a couple of Indians here. Yes, knowledge, okay? So gyan means knowledge. And as a human being, forget about as a student, as a human being, you have to be in a constant quest of gaining knowledge. I live by that every single day. Every little time that I have, I either want to talk to someone whom I can learn from, or I want to read a book. And that's all that I want to do. So firstly, as an entrepreneur, you got to be in a constant conquest of seeking gyan. And I put a little bit of an American flavor to it, and I call it gyanisms, right? So like you have Buddhism, you have gyanism. OK, so let's start. Gyanism number one. Dream. As an entrepreneur, all you do every single living moment of your life is your dreaming. You're thinking. You're dreaming about making someone's life better. You are dreaming about there's a certain way. Let's say Uber, when Uber started. Their dream was, and how did Uber start? Their dream was when the founder was standing and he could not get a car, how can a car come to me? Why are we constant? You guys are so young that you probably don't even know what it is like to hail a taxi, right? So you're constantly thinking about changing and improving something and that comes with dreaming about it and thinking that it is possible to do it. If you inherently think about failure, then you're not dreaming, then you're thinking about consequence and conclusion. The second thing about dreaming is being a nonconformist, right? So there are two types of entrepreneurs. Number one are people who are looking at a market evolving and they want to conform to that market and they kind of make it a little better and they start a company and that's great. Then there are nonconformists who like to solve big, massive problems. You're dreaming about, I want to build a restaurant in Mars. Totally fine to dream that, because it's only when you dream about it, are you actually going to make it happen? Give me a couple of dreamer entrepreneurs who you think you know. Elon Musk. Elon Musk, right. Who else? Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs. Who else? Walt Disney. Exactly. Look at what these amazing founders and entrepreneurs have created. They never stopped from dreaming. They dreamt about it. They started it and then they continued building it. So the number one gyanism is dream. I know parents and professors tell us, stop dreaming. This is life. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's OK to dream. OK. <laughs> Don't tell your parents that. They might put a bounty on my head. OK. Gyanism number two is ask. I am so impressed that you guys are here. I'm sure there are some students who decided to not come here. And that's totally fine. Maybe they have something other important things going on in their lives. But you decided that this is an opportunity for you to learn something new, to ask some questions that you're probably going to ask after this session. As an entrepreneur, you're constantly asking. You're asking, what is your need? How will you use this product? Will you join my company? How can I make this better? Will you give me money? You're constantly asking because you're so curious. And then, you're not just asking, you're also seeking, right? I ask a lot of questions, even today. I'll call up my investors. I have a bunch of advisors who actually advise me in different phases and different functions of how we are growing. I listen to everyone, so I seek, but I make my own conclusions. I don't need to follow somebody's answer blindly. It needs to be my decision, and if I fail or succeed, it's mine, and then I learn from it, and I go on my journey again. So the gyanism number two is ask and seek. Gyanism number three, 
build and launch fast. I'm sure this is something that you learn here in the school as well, right? If you are in a design tech school, this is the cornerstone of design. There is nothing like a perfect design. There is nothing like a perfect design. I was born with an engineering drafter in my hand, and I'm not joking. When I was a kid, uh, I would want to play with the Barbie or with Ken or something, and my dad would try to sneak in a drafter in my hand. Hey, maybe you should try this. Like, Dad, I don't want to do that. No, maybe you should look at this monster truck and play with it. Anyway, but what I learned from that experience and watching him do it and watching other entrepreneurs do it is, your product will never be perfect. And a lot of entrepreneurs fail because they want to build that perfect product. I make my team crazy. My product and tech team, they hate me, but they're still here. Because they know that I'm gonna give them a task and I'm gonna give them, hey, this is our next launch, and I'm gonna give them four weeks. And they have to figure it out. Because until you build something, just build it, mold it, and then give it to your customer and ask them to test it, and then take that user feedback and go and build it again. So when you're building a product, you're constantly evolving, but build and launch fast. Don't go into the mindset of analyzing and overanalyzing and then paralyzing your launch. Build and launch fast is really important. Okay, Gyanism number four, people. What does that mean? Why do I have people there? Yes. Connections, okay. Team, what in team? Types of people? Because they're the one who will create the things at the end of the day. Right. Okay. What types of people do you need on your team? Every kind. Define. Yes. Complementary, complementary weaknesses to the founder? Amazing. Yes. At the, at the start stage, extremely important. Great answer. What other kinds of people do you need on your team? Marketing, sales. Marketing, sales. What are the skill sets that those people need to have? The, the soft skills? Communication, do they need to agree with you or disagree with you? They need to have their own choices. Okay, how many people think that you need to hire? Seriously, there's no right or wrong answer, so don't try to think what I think. Because my thinking is my thinking. I know you know that I probably like people who don't agree with me, and that's a fact, but that does not mean anything. What do you think is what matters? How many of you think that on your team at a startup phase, you need people who agree with you? Don't do this, do this. Be, be proud of your answer, okay? How many people think you need people who disagree with you? Great answer. How many people think you need people who don't have an opinion either way? Or you don't want those people in your life, like seriously, okay. <laughs> so, because they're not adding anything to your life. You're constantly spending time with people who make your life better, the rule of five. You are, I mean, what am I gonna say? You are the average of the five closest people you are. Okay, so people. What kind of people do you need? I remember, yeah, you have a point? I was gonna say maybe people who agree with where you're going but disagree on how to get there. Absolutely, yeah, differing viewpoints. Um, when I was in business school, I took an entrepreneurship class. My professor's first day, first class, first slide was throw peanuts, get monkeys, okay? A lot of entrepreneurs think, oh, I'm gonna give you a little less money and I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna give you this equity, but there's no money. I have never done that, ever. I will not pay myself, but I will make sure that I get the best people and give them their worth to come join this journey. You cannot undercut on that. And you need all kinds of people. And as your company is evolving, you need different kinds of people. When you're starting, you need people who will jump, who are multitaskers. They're always looking for the next exciting thing. Next this, boom, boom, boom. They're constantly challenging you. They're coming up with great ideas. They are disagreeing, but they are okay with the chaos that comes with starting a startup. But those kind of people are not good when you're scaling and growing a company. So when, you are, when your company actually gets out of that initial product development phase and moves on to the next skill set, the nature of people whom you need will be more process-oriented people, more function, because now you, without killing the spirit of change. 
So it's okay to think that the kind of people you need across every phases is going to change. And as an entrepreneur, you need to be open to that. Many entrepreneurs may not be okay with every phase of the company. I'm okay with leading my company right now. Will I be okay with leading my company after five years? I don't know. And if I'm not, I'm going to step down and find another great human being who can do that. So that mindset has to be there. But the investment in the right people is very important. And it's not just about hiring the right people you got to fire too right so if people are not performing oh this is my friend or this is my wife or this is my girlfriend or boyfriend it doesn't matter right performance and actually doing what is needed to get done to move to the next level is a very important fact of it but you don't have to lose compassion you can still make all the decisions that you're making but you can make it in a very compassionate way okay Keanism number five, scale. A lot of people forget that. When you're building a product and you're building a company, you should also think about losing the chaos and building a good governance, right? You're hearing a lot about a lot of companies nowadays about crazy, crazy valuations and crazy, crazy scale. Scale is good, but you got to have the business principles around scale, right? What is your model? Are you making money? It's not just about having an idea. Is the idea a business that is eventually going to make a profit and you have the capacity and you're building the systems to scale? I know it's very early stage for you to really understand this, but I really want you to think about it. A lot of people think about starting a company and that's the exciting part because you can share on Twitter and social media and all your friends are saying, wow, this is great. But being an entrepreneur is not about being a celebrity. Then you be Kim Kardashian. Being an entrepreneur is about, <laughs> being an entrepreneur is truly about changing somebody's life. And that requires a lot of commitment and having the mindset of being able to scale your organization is really important. Last Gyanism. What do you think is my last Gyanism? Let's see what you guys are thinking. What's on your mind? Throw your wild ideas. Disagree with me and dream. Tell me what do you think is my last Kyanism? What do you think is that last bit of knowledge that is extremely important to be an entrepreneur? No, okay, but come back and tell me, yeah. Learn. Learn, okay. Research, Research okay. Be responsible. Be responsible. Be a good leader. Be a good leader, yep. Adapt, very good. What else? Okay, I'm gonna cold call the girls. How about you? <laughs> profit, okay. Whatever comes to your mind, there's no right or wrong answer. That's what entrepreneurship is all about. There's no right or wrong. It's what you think is right or wrong. Understanding your consumer. Understanding your consumer, very good. How about you? Um, I think ways to help people. Ways to help people, socially conscious. I like that. What else, yeah? Uh, sustainability, maintaining what you have already very good. Look at you guys. Amazing. I'm so proud of you. How about you? Determination. Sorry, I'm a fever. <laughs> <laughs> but you nailed it. But you nailed it, yeah. I would say profit. Profit, okay. You nailed it. Grit and focus, okay. All of what you said is right. But one of the things that you need to remember is do not give up. So the first part is grit. Like... Nick said, you're going to get this, punches, punches. The, you know, initially everyone will say, oh my God, you're so awesome, you started this. And then, every, then you will fail and then you will start questioning yourself. Do not care. If you have a product, you launched it, there is initial, don't be stupid. If nobody's buying your product, get out and start something new, right? <laughs> but if you've launched it, somebody's giving you money, you see the opportunity of growing it, you will get so many punches in your way, but be on your path. Determination, grit, perseverance is an inherent quality of an entrepreneur. Decide for yourself if you have it or not. If you don't have it, go work with another entrepreneur or talk to other entrepreneurs on what you can do to build the skill set. But never, ever give up. Ever. The second thing is focus. In today's world, you live in a distracted world. Twitter, Snapchat, TikTok, right? How many of you are on TikTok? <laughs> Probably all of you. What is the other latest new thing that I don't even know about? Instagram is not new, I know that, okay. <laughs> what else? 
what is the latest social media that is not TikTok, after TikTok? I don't know, I'm seriously asking you. That's what I learned from you. Nothing, TikTok is the latest? Okay, great. So don't defocus. We all have 24 hours in a day. Tinder. Tinder, yeah, but see, but that's not new. That's not new. Uh, so the way you have to think about entrepreneurship is you have to give up a lot. No pain, no gain, right? When everybody's out enjoying, you are sitting in a corner. Have you seen those pictures of Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, those old pictures, they're cramming on the computers? That's called focus. You will never see a picture of them throwing a party and enjoying in a party. Maybe there is, but it's not on the media. But the point is, you got to really focus. Because if you found that idea, and somebody's paying you for it, and it has opportunity to improve, you got to put your blinders on, you got to wear your noise cancelling headsets and go on your path. Do not care about what's happening around in your world. I have embodied that in my life. I love what I do. I wish there was a cure for not sleeping. And if you guys are designing something, please do share. And 24 hours, this is all I want to do. And I try to keep myself not distracted and completely focused. So these were the six gyanisms that I wanted to share with you today. I'm sure there's a lot that you guys are probably learning about that I don't know of, and I would love for you guys to share something with me, but I'm also probably now going to open it up to Q&A. Um, I feel uh, uh, you must have tasted a lot of success and while being through the journey of being an entrepreneur, uh, you must have uh, got a lot of failures as well. Sometimes mm -hmm. you feel the entire world is against you. Uh, so what's your Phoenix strategy like? How do you come up from um, being uh, sometimes in your low and rising back again? I have a rule. Nothing in the world should bother me for more than a night. Trust me. This will really help in your personal and professional life because it's not worth it, <laughs> trust me. If, if it bothers you for more than a night, you need to take action. The only answer to stress is action. What most of us do is we keep thinking about it. Failure, failure, oh my God, this didn't happen. I am so stressed about it. But you're wasting that time thinking about it rather than thinking about, okay, it's done. What can you do? It's done. Can you go back and change it? So there are two things you do. Number one is every time something didn't go as planned, you pattern recognize. I have so many Excel spreadsheets of my life that I seriously, and I pattern recognize and I do regression analysis. Now that's the nerd in me, but both my personal and professional. So I've actually, I'm, I'm not joking. When I used to date, I used to write every guy's name and what the skill sets were and you know, what did I do right and what did I do wrong? And it's, but that's how you learn. I'm not gonna cry over it, I'm just gonna move on, like seriously. But the point is, you don't take it as a failure, you process, you pattern recognize, you learn from it. The next time, when the same situation arises, you already know what path you have to take because you've processed this. A lot of people keep moving without stopping and processing life, that's not life, that's just, I don't know, that's just walking dead according to me. So that's how I do it. Yep, yeah. Uh, where do you find your motivation? Oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know what? Making other people happy. It really makes me happy. Like people in my company complain, and James will be testimonial to that, that I make everybody fat. And the reason is because I love to watch them eat food. And the reason I love to watch them eat food is I love to see them happy. So my motivation comes from improving your life. And everything that I have done in my life since I was, I think, 10 years old has been, what can I do to make you happy? And what can I do to make your life better? So my motivation comes from the happiness that others are receiving because of the work that I am doing and doing it in a socially conscious way. I believe that as a company, as an organization, as an institution, you can be a for-profit organization, but it's not just about increasing wealth and shareholder value. It's about increasing stakeholder value. I do believe that we have to rethink what capitalism means, and we have to rethink what it means to different people who touch the business, and that's what motivates me, that we are not just increasing shareholder value, but we're increasing stakeholder value, and that's extremely important to me. Yeah. So you mentioned distraction. How do you avoid it? 
Ah, that's a good question. Give me an example. Um, you are working on a project and you like get stuck in something and you're like, okay, I could maybe work around this, but probably I could just like go out and eat something. And yeah. Eat something and then you come back and you're like, Nah. Okay, so <laughs> trust me, it's hard because a lot of entrepreneurs are ADHD. I am supremely ADHD. So when you are ADHD, your brain is constantly moving. But trust me, even create a lot of entrepreneurs are ADHD because they're always trying to find something else to do. They're just like scrambling through things. I actually read an amazing book called Deep Focus or Deep Work, one of those two, which was great. So please do read that book. You have to work on it. Right? So you have to set timers. I am a big fan of Deep House music. I, I don't know if you guys like it, but when you put that music, there are no lyrics, right? And there's a certain 120 beats per minute or 128 beats per minute that it goes on. Different people listen to different kinds of things. So I have chunks of time in my day that I put to deep focus work, especially when I'm product designing or product thinking, especially when I'm running. I run and most of my ideas come from there. So when you hit a roadblock and you feel like your next reaction is to go and do something else, come back and process it and pattern recognize. So, and to change any habit, according to the rules of power of habit, it takes 90 days to change your habit. You will probably stop doing it less and less and less. And then one fine day you will reach a point where for four hours you're just sitting and deeply focused on work. You have to work on yourself to learn how to not be distracted. You have to make a list of it. What are the things that are actually taking your focus away? Remove them from your life and you have to think about. So you have to process and find it yourself. But try to read, try to ask other people whom you think can really focus well and then you will find your answers there. Yeah. you do something, yeah, how, how, how much do you think getting credit for it is important during? Personal credit as an entrepreneur or giving credit to others? I think personal credit because when you are... It's not important at all because when you are an entrepreneur, it's not you who are doing it, it's your team who's doing it, right? Okay. You didn't build anything. If, if it's your success, nobody succeeds alone. Personal credit is zero. I didn't build this company, I gave birth to this company, but this company was built by James, this company was built by my people. The total credit goes to them because they chose to give up whatever they were doing and give me their careers to come join this journey of crazy Shelly land to be on this path with me. So the complete credit goes to them and not just them, also my clients, my customers, my users, the credit goes to them for having that mindset to try something new. So our company, we are like the peloton of K-12 classroom. So the classroom is just the way this is. And my instructors on a big screen here and they are interacting with each other. That's a very new way to teach and learn. So the credit goes to all of those people. I get zero credit. Yep. Yeah. Um, so like when you're finding the right people to uh, help you with your company, how, how do you do that? Great question. So you network a lot. You go out. A, a lot of us uh, are scared to go talk to new people. Um, I am here. One of the reasons is I want to meet new people. I, I, I want to see what IIT is all about. I want to share what I built, right? So when you have an opportunity, and this is the time that you get to network because you are in an enclosed environment with so many amazing smart people and smart professors. Go find those people. Have a coffee with them. Buy them a drink. It doesn't matter. Buy a coffee, buy a drink. It'll be $2 to $8. Have a conversation. You'll either click or you'll not. You don't, it's like dating, right? So it doesn't click, you move on to your next one. The couple of things that you have to remember when finding people is two things that I believe. Your values have to match. It's very important. And your style of confrontation has to match. There are two types of people. One who are able to effectively argue with each other. Second type who just like scram it out and shout at each other. And the third type, one will shut down and they will not talk at all. 
the style of confrontation has to be similar otherwise that professional or personal relationship will not be successful so to me those are some of the early identifiers to me my most successful team members are the ones who constantly argue we have created a culture in our company of open confrontation i don't want yes sirs no sirs yes ma'am no ma'ams in my company i want people who can effectively and maturely argue because the ultimate goal is creating an amazing company and it's not about personal credit or personal ego okay yeah um so you started off because you had an idea and because you saw something and you wanted to change that and you wanted to create that and you had that idea and you wanted to set path on that mm -hmm. but what what advice do you have for people and students who <laughs> want to really work who want to really establish yeah. something but do not have an idea and do not have something to work on but they in general they feel that they can and they want to and sure. they want to be an entrepreneur but they do not know what idea to start off with this is a great question because i get asked these questions every time i talk in in front of a class how do you find your passion or how do you find your idea there are some things that you can do to do that it's not going to happen by watching netflix it's not going to happen by watching hulu or snapchat or tiktok or either one of those things it's going to happen when you get out and meet and explore and travel and you see and you hear and you visualize your outside every each one of us every time you're watching netflix what reed hastings is probably going to kill me but what value is it adding to you right so the idea is read a book go outside go visualize the world what is outside go do some volunteer work and when you're doing and exploring and spending your non studying time doing that you're going to start figuring out and feeling the world a little differently for me it was going to that junior achievement program if i would have never gone there i would have never realized it and this would have not started a lot of my other ideas also came from that so go out and explore and don't think that you want an idea if it's coming to you great and it's not just about getting an idea you got to be deeply passionate about it you will give up if you're not passionate about your idea i'm telling you that and that's going to be a disaster so make sure it's something that you really really love and you have to figure that out yourself and meet other entrepreneurs talk to them go to meetups do all of that and you will find it trust me it's a process and uh the the process has to be followed yeah Do you face any difficulties when you want to actually become an entrepreneur as an immigrant from India? Oh, <laughs> I know there's a lot of uh, questions that I personally have. Like visa know. or what? Yeah, in terms of that, and also in terms of culture, <laughs> and also you know in, in getting used to coming up with a startup over here in the US. I know because having a startup in India is different, and having a startup over here in the US is different. So, yeah. This country was built on entrepreneurship and the immigrant journey, right? Yeah. The systems and the groundwork and the foundation is built around innovation and research and development. Yeah. There's a reason why we came here. We came here because yes, our countries are amazing. We were born there. We have a lot of pride there. But there is an open culture of innovation here. If you think of that as a problem it's going to be a problem i did not think of it as a problem i was just like oh wow this is great right i have so many universities i have these campuses i have these professors it never crossed my mind that that was a problem i genuinely did not care what the other world was doing but that's just me i had this idea and i was just going from professor to professor trying to uh, you know get answers but you are nervous of course there's nervousness about okay i want to start my company but what visa am i going to stay her on so i was scared too but the passion for what i was trying to build was so high that i just went on and i said you know what i'm going to figure it out along the way and trust me i figured it out along the way it was really difficult it was really hard you get a one year opt there's a reason you get your opt right use that opt time to build something use that opt time to create something so do that and then along the way you will figure out 
you have to go i spoke to a lot of immigration attorneys try to get a lot of knowledge and figure out this path of this visa that was created for entrepreneurs to start a lot of my friends did not even think about starting because they were nervous about the visa situation i went head on saying worst come worst what i'm going to go back to my country and india is very different now than what it was when i was there okay so with that mindset what is your next best option and if that next best option is not a terrible option take the risk how old are you seriously this is a time for you to take a risk if it doesn't work out you'll find another path and you know what there's a chance it might work out so that's why you have to think about it yeah oh, look at that that's a perfect perfect timing great yeah any of the students do actually have classes yes uh, absolutely so they're going to start filing out to yeah. get okay. this good time yeah so thank you thank yeah you. Those of them that might want to connect with you, is LinkedIn a good place? LinkedIn is great. Our, our office is in downtown Chicago. You know, James is our talent manager right there. If you guys have any questions, please reach out to James. Uh, we have a fabulous, amazing team. We'll be happy to talk to all of you. And if I can help you in any way, please do reach out. And you are looking for interns. Anyway. Yes, we are. We are always looking for interns. That is so true. That's yeah. great. Okay, great. Thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Yeah.